This tutorial will cover cartography in QGIS. In this session, we're going to learn how to organize and package our data, work with different map projections, including a azimuth orthographic projection. We're going to style and theme our data and create nice maps using the print layout, including an inset locator map. So without further ado, let's get started by downloading some data. We're going to download data from the Natural Earth Collection. This will include raster and vector data at medium and small scales, 1 to 50 meters and 1 to 10 meters. There are cultural, physical vectors, and raster files. You can also get started by downloading a, pack, a geo package with a collection of all of the um, vector files you'll need. For this session, you'll need countries, lakes, rivers, lakes, center lines, rivers, Europe supplement, optionally the lakes, Europe supplement, radicules at 15 degrees, Natural Earth 1 shaded relief with water raster and the shaded relief water drainage raster from the 1 to 10 meter small scale data set. All of these will be in WGS 1984, the World Geodetic System of 1984 in Latlong. And we're going to look at making these as a nice globe. So let's start a new project in QGIS. To begin with, you want to download and extract that data, and we'll browse for it here in the QGIS browser. Put your data into a folder called Natural Earth. I've added it to my favorites here. I have the Natural Earth directory. I have all of the data downloaded in folders, and I'm going to next create a geo package to store it in. Rather than moving a large number of folders and files around with my QGIS project, I'd like to package all of the data into one file, one database, a geo package. So let's look at two ways to create a new geo package and put all of the data into it. To start with, I'm going to click on the Natural Earth directory here, go to New, Geo Package. This will create a new geo package inside of it. I'm going to set the path here in database to my Natural Earth folder and create a new geo package called Natural Earth. In my case, I'm going to call it Natural Earth Demo because we've already created it. Put in a name for the table and set the geometry type to no geometry. Oops. We'll start empty and we'll fill it. Okay. And now it should appear here on the browser. You can expand it and see there's just the table inside, nothing else. If you need to refresh, you can use the refresh button here. So we're ready to add the other data to it. So I have the graticules as a shape file right here. You can see, expand that and see the .shp shape file. If I look at the folder on my file system, you'll see that there's not only the SHP for a shape file, it actually comes with five different files. SHX, SHP, PRJ, DBF, CPG. You need to move all of these around because when you open the shapefile, it's going to reference these others, the database, the projection, so forth. So it will be very nice to put this inside of a geo package so that I don't have to manage all these files. So to do that, we can simply drag and drop it here in the browser into the geo package. It will tell us it's imported successfully. And then I can go grab the next one. So let's say I take this raster natural earth raster, a TIFF file, I'm going to drag and drop it here into the geo package. This will take a little longer to import, and I can go ahead and 
start importing the next one. This is a the larger small scale raster. I'll import this. It'll take a while. And while I'm at this, um, instead of downloading individual shape files for all of my vector data, I downloaded the vector theme. It's a geo package. But I want to import these into the same database I'm working with. And I'm going to show you a different way to do this, and this is also a great way to create a new geo package. Instead of dragging and dropping five of these, I'm going to add them to my layer manager. I'm going to double click countries, lakes, lakes Europe, rivers Europe, rivers lakes centerline scale, and finally. all I need. We didn't get country. Should be all we need. And I'm going to use an algorithm from the processing framework. Make sure you've enabled this under plugins, plugins manage and install. And it's a default plugin. It's installed. It's a core plugin, so you just need to make sure that it's checked. No need to install it. The panel should appear here on the right, and we can go to search for this. It should be under database, or we can simply search geo package and pull up package layers. This will take layers here in our layer tree, and we can add them to a so I need to select the input layers. First, zero is selected, so I'll click on this dialog. Select all, select all the layers I've added here. Go back. Now the output destination, I'm not gonna overwrite. I'm gonna save these into a file. And I'm gonna, I could create a new geo package or I can select this one, Natural Earth. Emojio package. It's not going to replace it, it's going to add them. Run it. They're being imported into my geo package. When it finishes, I can refresh and I'll see them loaded. I go to my geo package refresh and I see all my layers here. Now these are the ones that were in the other geo package so I want to remove them from my layer tree and add the ones in this collection. I'm going to start by just adding the countries and I'll style this and put the fill style to a light gray, stroke color black, stroke width maybe of 0 0.2. And now we're going to change the projection for our project. You can find the projection under project properties and it will be the third tab, CRS, for coordinate reference system. We can also find it in the bottom right of our screen here with a little globe symbol and the code for the current we're going to use one that comes with QGIS called World from Space. The World from Space. We can hit apply. Now we see countries of the world on a spheroid or ellipsoid. Okay. We want to edit this. We can go back to the project properties and for the world from space, we have a description here. There is a WKT file, a well-known text file describing it quite wordily. And we can also see there's a proj projection 
transformation string. We're going to use this instead because it's simpler. So copy this from the existing world from space, and we'll use it to customize our world from space projection so that it centers where we want it. So we're going to go to settings, custom projections, and I'm going to hit the add CRS button to create a new one. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this um, customized world from space. I'm going to change the format to proj string and paste in that string. So this is the same shape as the one before. I'm going to change this. The lat zero and the long zero are the latitude of natural origin. I'm going to change that so that our latitude will stay the same and our longitude, I'll set that to something like um, minus 0 0.5. And validate, then OK, and we'll create it. Now let's set it. We'll go back to our CRS properties, and let's search for it. So we just made customized world from space. We can hit apply and see our projection. So we're centered on Europe now. And we'll use this to create an inset locator map showing where Europe is while we show a map of European rivers. So our next step will be to style our data. We're going to style the date. We're going to style the layers for the inset map of the globe first, our locator globe, and we'll save that as a theme. For the themes, we can easily switch the styling of our maps. So we'll create a theme for the map and the locator map. Start with a locator map. I'm going to add the layers that I need. We're going to have countries. Oops, I don't have that. I have countries. We can optionally add the graticules. And we want to create a new map of countries that's focused on Europe. We may also want to um, add a raster map. So I'll use the 1 to 50 meter natural earth raster. I'm going to put that at the bottom. And now I want to make the countries just, a, just an outline. So I'm going to change this from simple fill to simple outline. And I might change the color to white. might even lower the opacity of this. And for the graticules, I'll set this to perhaps black. Set a line width. you can optionally set an opacity. So style is how you like. And next, we want to extract the continent of Europe. So to do this, we're going to use a processing framework. We're 
we're going to look in RAS Vector Selection Tools, Extract by Attribute. So the, we're going to use the Countries layer. The selection attribute will be Continent. somewhere in here. I'll just type it. There we go. And the value will be Europe. And we're going to create a new map. So I'll hit save to geo package. Select our geo package here. And I'll call the layer name Europe. And we can run that. And this file has been written to our geo package. We refresh, we'll see it appear. Maybe I wrote it to the wrong geo package. Let me just copy that. And let's style this. So I'm going to double click on Europe, go to the Symbology tab, the third one, and I'm going to set the colors for the simple fill. I'll set the stroke color to a dark blue, line weight maybe 0 0.2, and fill color I'll set it to a lighter, but still a different shade from the ocean. All right, that should highlight where Europe is pretty clearly. And we now are ready to save this as a theme. So in the layer manager, there's a button manage map themes. We're going to go add theme. We're going to call this theme globe, or you could call it inset if you prefer. And that will save this for a map layer. Let's go ahead and save the project while we're at it. So project, save as, and in your natural earth folder, we'll create a new QGIS project called natural earth demo, for example, and this will be a QGZ. And save it. If we refresh. Here we'll see the Natural Earth Demo and our Natural Earth Demo Geo package together. Okay, so we've saved our theme. Now let's create a new theme. We'll go ahead and hide these maps and add some new ones. I'm going to add the higher resolution Natural Earth. And let's go ahead and zoom in on your. For this, we want to add the rivers and lakes, lakes, the lake supplement for Europe, river supplement for Europe, and the rivers lake centerline file. Let's go ahead and style these. We'll start with the lakes. That's easier. Lakes, we're going to set the fill color based on the ocean. So we'll take the fourth tab here, sample, color picker, sample color. We're going to sample probably on the continental shelf where there's a flatter blue. Okay, we can set the stroke color either to the same or to transparent, probably better in this case. We'll do the same thing with uh, Lakes Europe. Set the fill color here. Rather than using the picker, we'll use the recent swatches and pick the same color that we just used. Oh, 
and we need to uh, set its stroke color to transparent. Now we'll style the river supplement. We'll set this color to a darker blue. What we can do is we could select this blue we just used and adjust its value so it's a stronger blue and a darker blue so that it, it stands out from the, uh, from the water but is a similar shape, from the oceans and lakes but it's a similar shape. Apply. And then we probably want to reduce the line weight here to 0 0.075. It'll really fade out. And now we'll set our rivers, lake centerline scale. This is rivers with a stream order, a hierarchy. So let's go to the symbology. We can start by setting the color. We'll set the last color we used for the European river supplement. We're going to, instead of setting a width here, we're going to use the data defined override. So right click on this click on this and go to the assistant. In the assistant, we're going to create a stroke width based on data. Source, we could use scale rank. That's from one to nine, where one is the largest part of the river, where the most branches connect to. Instead, we're going to, but, so that would be the inverse of the line weight we need to use. Instead, we're gonna pick the nice stroke weight field they've already created for us. To get values, we hit load values here, and you see the stroke weights go from 0 0.2 to 2. We're going to rescale that here in our output from, I think, 0.1 to 1.25. Hit OK and apply. And we'll see our rivers show up by scale. So for example, the Danube is quite thick and powerful. And if we scroll over, we can see the Nile as well. So our rivers are looking great and we're ready to save this as a map. You could, of course, add much more. You could add country boundaries, cities, labels, all sorts of things. Let's go ahead and save this map theme. So manage map themes. We'll add a new theme and call this map. Now we're ready to go to the print layout. So project, new print layout, and give this a name. and the print layout window opens. So here in the print layout, we're gonna start by adding a map. Here on the left, add map. I'm gonna start with the map of Europe, European rivers. So I'll snap onto the edges of my canvas here, and draw it from corner to corner. It's gonna render the current map on my QGIS display. And let's go ahead and do the settings. So the map shows up here under items. I'm gonna rename it to just map. I have it selected and its item properties show up here. For this, I'm gonna change, first of all, I'm gonna change the map theme to map. It will stay the same because it's the same theme. The CRS, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to search for one. I'm going to search for Europe Lambert Conformal Conic. I've used it recently, so it shows up. You can type it right here. Make it 
the list and you can pick it. Okay. And as you can see, our projection changed a bit. We can set our map scale here, maybe um, 1 to 20 million or 1 to 50, 15 million. So I'll try that. 15 looks like the right number of zeros. 1 to 15 million. And I will use move item context to adjust my map a bit. I could try to fit the Nile in here, or I could focus more on north, fitting Northern Europe in. In this case, I'm interested in this blue space over here. It's quite useful for me because that's the space I need to put my indicator, my locator map. Let's go ahead and add that now. I'm going to draw a new map, so add another map, snap to that top right corner, and we'll draw this out in the space we have here. If you don't have enough space, we can of course shift the map over a bit. Right now it's still showing the same map. I'm going to go here to items. First of all, I'm going to rename this to inset or locator map or globe, whichever you choose. Under item properties, first thing I'm going to do is go to map theme and change this to globe. I'm going to load the globe map theme. I probably need to change the scale here to start with, maybe 200 million. Enter. Um, I may need to adjust a little bit. And then we need to change one of the properties. Here we see background. That's putting a white background behind us. We can change the settings, but we simply want to turn this off by unclicking it. Now we can see our inset map nicely over the ocean. If we want to adjust the relationship between our locator map and our base map, I might click down here on my map, select it, select move item context, and shift my map over a little get some more space around my inset map. Maybe move it a little bit off the border. Okay, our map is looking great. One last thing we, we might want to do is add a scale bar. There's a lot more cartographic elements we could add, but we'll keep this fairly simple. Put a little bit of blue space to put it on right down here, and I'm going to add a scale bar. Select add scale bar here on the left on my toolbar, and I'm going to drag and draw a window for it down here. Adjust where it is. Since I've placed it, of course. Now I want to change the type. I see it show up here, scale bar in my items, and which map it's for is for map, which is correct. In the style, I'm going to change this to numeric. Now it's a text, just a number, 1 to 15 million, as I'd said it. If I want to change the properties of the font and the colors, I can go here to display, font, this pulls up the font properties. You can add all sorts of things like a buffer, a drop shadow, change the font like later. I'm going to change the color in this case to white so that it's not too strong. 
maybe adjust the placement a little bit. And then we're ready to save this. To export this, we can export as an image. Exporting as a PDF might be useful um, to preserve the vector and raster work. And if you want to edit this, for example, in Inkscape for free, or in Adobe Illustrator, you can export as a SVG. So let's export this as an image, as a JPEG. So we have a map of European rivers as a JPEG, save. You can set the resolution here to 300 DPI at least, I suggest. If you want to print this, it should be at least 300 up to perhaps 1200 DPI. And go ahead and save. If you wish to adjust the general settings of the map, you can right click on the map and go to page properties, and that will let you set the page size orientation width and height. All right, that concludes this general introduction to cartography in QGIS. Thank you.